Hey everyone, this is Chris from Goodies Galore. And what we have here today is a Native American doll presented by Carol Fulmer. Now, uh, this was created back in the 90s and she's a really well-known maker from that time. Uh, there's many dolls that she does. Um, this is one of them. And as you see, it all has that prairie look from that time period of when it would be customary for a little native girl to have a doll like this. It's in really replicated really well. And the backdrop is a child's blanket that I currently possess. Um, that's not for sale, but the doll herself is for sale. And she's a really unique piece. Um, I would like to read you a little excerpt from Country Home, the March, April 1997 Actually, I'm reading it from here. This is a article that was written about her dolls. And it starts, I don't care much for porcelain dolls. They're usually too formal, Carol says. And a simple rag doll wasn't quite sophisticated enough for me. I needed something beyond that. Unable to uncover Azana's production secrets which is a which is a Azana Walker is a famed uh, doll maker that she patterned herself after so it says unable to uncover Azana's production secrets Carol soon developed her own methods rather than molding the heads and faces of her dolls as Azana most likely did in the 1870s Carol shapes the face of each figure by wetting knit cloth with an acrylic solution, then stretching it over a form. When the cloth mask is dry and stiff, she glues it to a batting filled muslin head. It's a similar process to that developed in the 1880s by doll maker Richard Montanari, best known for his wax dolls who used wax and muslin to form faces for inexpensive cloth dolls. Under Carol's guiding hand, each doll, each doll's individuality blossoms early. Once the mask is applied to the body, Carol draws in temporary features. She says, I have to have a face to look at so I can get an idea of what this little person is going to look like she says when you draw that face on particularly the eyes suddenly there is a presence in the room then begins the labor intensive finishing process carol applies more acrylic medium to even out rough spots and build up features she sands the head extensively paints on the permanent features then antiques and pickles the face, neck, hands, and legs to lend them an aura of age. The resulting doll combines the expressive form of a china or wax head doll with the charm and individuality of a rag doll, exactly what Carol had in mind. They do take on a life of their own, she says. The dolls with shaped faces are her favorites, but Carol also makes smooth faced doll cloth dolls along with dolls that have a single shaped feature, such as their nose. nose. And basically, that kind of is a rundown of what type of doll she makes. And this is an example of one. And if you look, she's got her little, uh, let me lay her back a little bit. She's got her little leather or uh, rawhide skin drum and here is a signed and this is 
Uh, let's see here. Walking. Walking Bear. Carol Fuller, 1998. That's when this was designed, this doll. And look at the bone around her neck. Really cool. It's got like that. It's got a little feather in her. Her boots are made out of the, the her moccasins are made authentically with the leather. She's got a wrap around her. She has the ponytails. And then flip her around and um, let's see her her body. I mean her uh, little basket. Little basket weaved on the back that she's carrying on her back. Um, I want to see an example of her hands. Show you her hands up close. Oop. The backdrop. see her hands and there's a little bit of wear on that hand a little bit of wear um, but basically that is walking bear in a nutshell and I thank you for viewing her today have a great day.